Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, I'm here today to talk about why you might want to dehydrate your bone broth from your chicken, beef, turkey, whatever it is, and instead of canning or freezing it, why I've started doing it at least, and its uses. But if you want to learn how to dehydrate bone broth, or at least how I do it, I'll link to the video that I did last year down below in the description box. Last year was my first year to start dehydrating the bone broth. Now, up until last year, what I'd been doing was freezing it. And that's just the turkey bone broth, because usually when I'm doing chicken, I roast a whole chicken, I use the meat up in a few different meals, and then I take the bones and make a broth out of it, and usually it gets used up right away. For example, the last time I made it, I used it to rehydrate my dried potato powder, mashed potato powder, to make coal cannon, and it turned out excellent. But with turkey bone broth, I usually have more than what I'm gonna use up right away. And so I've been freezing it, and the re reason I've been freezing rather than canning it is only because I was waiting to get enough at one time to fill up my whole canner, because I didn't have the smaller canners at that time. Then it dawned on me last year, why don't I just dehydrate it? It's gonna take up a lot less space and I'm more apt to use it. Because here was my other issue that I had with the frozen. Even though I was taking some of it out of the freezer now and then to use it, uh, which kept bringing my amount back down, which is why I never did end up with a full can. The problem I had there was remembering to pull it out in time in order to use it. And that was frustrating when I think about it way too late. With it dehydrated, it's it's ready to use right away. You just gotta add it to some kind of liquid to rehydrate it. And I love the fact that I can make it stronger by adding less water back to it. <laughs> so I end up with a real strong broth or whatever it is I'm using it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about how I make my bone broth and about the nutrients that you preserve in the process because that's a question you're going to get from anyone who's curious about things that are like canned pressure canned foods or anything that's cooked for a long period of time because people are under this impression that all nutrients are lost out of cooked food which is absolutely not true so first of all you'll see behind me this is my big stainless steel roaster that i bought last year love it this was actually i got it after thanksgiving last year so this was my first year actually getting to use it to roast a turkey and and i love it and i was able to get rid of that last aluminum pan that i had and that was my roaster and go with all stainless steel it's a little more expensive but it's a lot in the long run it's going to be a lot better because it's better for your health and plus it's just pretty so what i did is after i you know after we got all the meat or at least most of the meat off the turkey i usually leave all those little bits and pieces then i just add a bunch of water to the pot with the bones and put it on my wood stove and let it cook for two to three days a lot of that's going to depend on how hot the fire is during that time how much it really got to simmer real good while it was on there and then today what i'm going to be doing i've got this cooling down right now i just took it off my wood stove and I'm gonna be straining it and then dehydrating it up. Now, typically what I do is, a lot of people will add vinegar to the water, you know, like a tablespoon or so, cause that's gonna supposed to help draw the minerals and the gelatin out of the bones. Uh, I don't bother with that. I tried vinegar one time and even that small amount, I hated the way it made the broth taste. Now it'd be fine if you're making a hot and sour soup, like I, I have a video on how to make an Asian hot and sour soup, which we love to have every so often. That would be fine because it does have vinegar in it, but for use and for anything else, I didn't like it. So what I started doing instead is using my own homemade wine to draw that out. Now in this case, all I had to do was add the water because the night before Thanksgiving, what I do was actually, I've done this for a few years now, I take my homemade wine and I pour it over the turkey and into the turkey and then let it sit in that kind of brine with some spices like garlic, onion, sage, thyme, and let that sit overnight in that. And so it can really absorb those flavors. And of course the brine's gonna help me tenderize the meat as well. And so then all I did was just, then I, when I went to make the broth, I already had the wine in there. I just needed to add more water to it was all. 
And then again, two to three days, you just let it simmer. You can use a slow cooker if you have one. I have one, I just never use it because I'm usually this time of year, if I'm doing anything like that, it's going on the wood stove or it's gonna go in the solar oven outside. So anyway, that's just one method. Some people will do that, put it in a slow cooker and you want the bones and all in there and just let it cook for a few days. So let's talk a little bit about those nutrients. So what people have the misconception of, because they hear stuff, you know, when they're learning about freeze dried foods or buying a freeze dryer so they can freeze dry their own foods, they're constantly given this impression. And remember, it's part of a selling factor that you're gonna preserve all your nutrients this way and that cooked food or dehydrated food loses all its nutrients or most of its nutrients, but it's not entirely based on truth. There's th certain facts that are being left out. For example, when you're dehydrating, the heat that you set it at matters. So when they're doing the comparisons of nutrients saved and lost, they're usually comparing it with somebody dehydrating at a high heat, like 140 and above, not at a low heat, like 110 to 115, like I always use. Rarely, I might go up to 120, but that's rare. Typically 115 is what I use for anything. It's not an herb, 110 for herbs. When you're doing a low heat like that, you're not going to lose all of your nutrients. Now, yes, heat will destroy a lot of your vitamins because vitamins are more susceptible to destruction from heat. But all of your minerals, all of your protein, all of your carbohydrates, and even the gelatin that you're pulling out of those bones are still gonna remain intact. And that's why you're doing that whole process in the first place, it, that cooking process with the bones is to pull the minerals out, the magnesium, the calcium, and more, so that when you're consuming this product, you're not just using it for flavor, you're getting those good minerals and the gelatin that has so many benefits to your digestive system, your hair and your fingernails and so on. So that's the purpose of the cooking. And no, you're not, you know, if you're gonna, any nutrients that you would have lost, you would have already lost it anyway when you cooked the turkey or the beef roast with the bone in it or the chicken in the first place. So, and that same, that same thing applies to any of your canned foods. Yes, you'll lose a lot of your vitamins, but all of your minerals, carbohydrates, proteins, those are gonna stay intact. So now let's talk a little bit about a couple of reasons why I'm preferring to dehydrate besides just ease of use, which I already mentioned, but also because it takes up so much less room and storage, be it you're freezing it or you're canning it. Either way, you're taking up a far less room. So last year when I, I dehydrated the bone broth, I started with the several jars that I had from that year's turkey. Then I went to the freezer and started pulling out all the broth from the previous years that was still in there and dehydrated all that up. So I had, I don't know how, I, I don't honestly remember how many pints of broth I had. I believe I mentioned it in the video I did last year on dehydrating the bone broth. But I ended up with a, at least a pint and a half, almost two pints, I think it was, of dehydrated bone broth. So I was able to bring that down to a very small amount. And as far as storage goes, I actually keep this one in the freezer simply because I left all the fat in the broth and because I didn't want to vacuum seal this between uses every single time. So I just keep this one jar. I actually already used up the previous jar, but the open jar, I just keep in the freezer because it's only taking up that one little bit of space in the freezer door. That way I don't have to vacuum seal between every use because whenever you got something that's got a lot of fat in it, vacuum sealing is, is going to prevent it from going rancid. So that's why if you keep it on a shelf, you do want to vacuum seal between every use or use it all up at once or keep your opened jar in the freezer. So then what I do is I take a, a tablespoon, two tablespoons, four tablespoons, however many it is that I need to use in whatever it is I'm using it in. Now obvious uses would be soup. Of course, you could turn around and make soup by just adding however many uh, tablespoons you want. I don't know an exact ratio to give you, but I would suggest at least a tablespoon per quart of water that you're gonna put in there. You know, considering how much it condenses down, that should be pretty good right there, but you can do a tablespoon for every cup if you want. It's just gonna be all up to you and how strong you want that flavor 
or the amount of gelatin and minerals and so on you want to add. So I just play it by ear and go by flavor. So anyway, soup, obviously stews, so on, super easy. Now some other things you can do is like what I call the Tar Heel beans and cornbread. I will use this when I'm cooking up the beans. I'll put the water in there, I'll add the broth, and then just mix it in with that whatever other herbs and spices I'm using in that. Because basically I'm making kind of a soupy bean anyway, but also because I want that flavor cooking into the beans as it cooks. So the same thing applies to any other dried things that you're gonna cook, be it rice or noodles. You can add your powdered broth directly to your cooking water and then cook that up. The nice thing about cooking rice, for example, cooking up wild rice to make my wild white rice stuffing that goes in the turkey, I can add the broth directly to the water, then put the rice in and so it's all cooking together and you don't and once it's all done, you got the right amount of water. It's usually two parts water to one part rice no matter what type of rice you're making. And then that broth is cooking into the rice along with the water. Now this time I have to admit, because I was so busy, I totally forgot to add the broth to the water when I was cooking the wild rice, but that didn't stop me from adding the broth into the wild rice later. So since I was going to stuff the bird with it anyway, and I knew it was going to get a lot of steam and moisture from the roasting process, what I did was went ahead and put the mix the dried broth into the rice along with the pepper, salt, and herbs that I use in there. And if you're interested in my wild rice, uh, stuffing recipe. I do have a video on that I did several years ago. I'll link to that down below. And then another thing is you can add this to any kind of gravy you're making. Even if you're making a milk-based gravy like it's often used in biscuits and gravy or your chicken or turkey a la king, you can add a tablespoon or two of that as you're making those things. And then even in casseroles, any kind of casserole, usually your casseroles are, are one dish meals, you're going to have some kind of liquid in there, at least a little bit. Again, throw your broth in there. So another example I gave in another video was that one dish meal. I don't put a lot of liquid in there. I just put a little bit, but it's the one I do with the cabbage and the sausage and the potatoes. Then in that case, what I do is since I want to have a little bit of water in the bottom of the pan, then I'll throw the turkey broth, the powdered tur turkey broth in there with it. And you'll see if you watch that video that I show that I add that in there. And so I'll link to that down below as well. And this could apply to any kind of casserole that you're making, because usually you're going to have some kind of liquid, whether it be a cheese sauce, a cream of mushroom sauce, which I have a video on that as well. If you want some of that broth in there to add more flavor and more nutrition, then go ahead and add a tablespoon or two, whatever sounds good to you as far as measurements. So the reason this picture, by the way, is back here, it's kind of funny, but there's also a point to it, is this turkey right here was the turkey that was raised by our friends uh, the previous year, before Thanksgiving of last year. And they donated that turkey, That and this is Comrade, that was his name. They donated that turkey after they butchered and dressed him for me to, cook up for everyone when, when they came over for dinner. Well, so this that very turkey broth that ended up getting used in this year's wild rice stuffing. So I went ahead and framed the picture. They took the picture last year, gave it to me, had it on the refrigerator all this time. This year I went ahead and framed it and stuck it out there because even though I roasted a different turkey, Comrade still had a part of our dinner. And I had, so, I had made up so much gravy last year from him that I had frozen that and had planned on thawing it out and using it and never did. And so I thawed it out and it became our gravy for our mashed potatoes this year. And I didn't have to make a fresh batch of gravy. And so, yeah, he had, he was part of our Thanksgiving dinner again in two ways. But I say all that because you can make the most out of whatever it is. So just like anything that's gonna have a bone in it, once you use up all that meat, like for us, I mentioned the chicken thing is something I do quite often or a roast. I might cook up a whole roast, beef roast or elk roast or venison roast or cook up a whole chicken. You eat on that one night for dinner, then you take the leftover meats and there's so many things you can do with that. Now, any of those meats that still have bone left that's what you then cook down and make the most out of that. 
So especially with the way things are going right now, making the most out of all of your food so nothing goes to waste is really important so that we can save money and be more frugal and just make our groceries last a lot longer. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. So why I like to dehydrate and it's something I recommend. So if you're still canning or freezing all your broths, then consider dehydrating if you're needing to free up space for other things in your freezer or on your shelves. This is a great way to go about it. I've started, even though I've been dehydrating for longer than I've been pressure canning at least, I've in the past couple of years started dehydrating a lot more because of the space it's saving both on my shelves, in my pantry and in my freezer. And some of those things would be eggs and meats and more. So I have several videos on these things. I'll be linking to some of that below. And I also am going to have a new video on dehydrating milk and making your own milk powder. So this is uh, right now in flakes because some of the milk that I'm dehydrating is it's not fully dried yet. So I just took all the dry pieces out, put the pieces that are still gummy back on the in the dehydrator. So later today when those are done, I'll be powdering that up. And then I'll be shooting a video on how to dehydrate milk. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any more thoughts and ideas, if you're already dehydrating your bone broths, how are you using them? Are you at even possibly adding them to smoothies and stuff just to get the gelatin, more gelatin into your diet because you need it for your gut health or for your hair or your fingernails? Share with us down below the ways that you use it so that others can learn from you as well. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.